From the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 8, verse 6 to 13. Brothers and sisters, now our high priest has obtained so much more excellent a ministry, as he is mediator of a better covenant, enacted on better promises. For if that first covenant had been faultless, no place would have been sought for a second one. But he finds fault with them and says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will conclude a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will be like the covenant I made with their fathers, the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt. For they did not stand by my covenant, and I ignored them, says the Lord. But this is the covenant I will establish with the house of Israel. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws in their minds, and I will write them upon their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people, and they shall not teach each one his fellow citizen and kin, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me, from least to the greatest, for I will forgive their evil doing, and remember their sins no more. When he speaks, of a new covenant, he declares the first one obsolete, and what has become obsolete and has grown old is close to disappearing. The Word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 3, verses 13 to 19. Jesus went up the mountain and summoned those whom he wanted, and they came to him. He appointed twelve, whom he also named apostles, that they might be with him, and he might send them forth to preach, and to have authority to drive out demons. He appointed the twelve, Simon, whom he named Peter, James, son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, whom he named Bonerges, that is, son of thunder, Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanine, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, my dear children and my dear young people, today, Friday, 20th of January 2022, we are in the second week of the ordinary time of the liturgy of the Church. We are also on the third day of the week of prayer for unity among all Christians, all believers in one God and one Lord and in Jesus Christ. Today, in fact, the gospel taken from Mark chapter 3 verses 13 to 19 does speak to us about the election of the twelve apostles. Now, when we think about this election, when we reflect on this election of the twelve by Jesus in order to carry his mission to procl in proclaiming the good news to all corners, to all nations, there are certain things that we can 
we, we can identify in the, in the category of the apostles, in their personality, in their provenience, in their professions, in their backgrounds, which is important. Important for us to understand that the difference with, uh, among the diversity of characters, diversity of cultures, diversity of backgrounds from which now these 12 are chosen, 12 are elected, and they are sent to preach the good news of the kingdom. When we think about there are two pairs of apostles, Peter and Andrew. At the same time, we have another pair of brothers, the sons of Zebedee, John and James. Then the others, some like Andrew, his name is a Greek name. Now he's the brother of Peter and they are Jewish by birth, but he has a Greek name. You can imagine the mixture of the so-called the mixture of the integration of the cultural situations, the cultural patterns and the cultural mentalities of the time already in the time of Jesus. Then we have like uh, Simon, the one who was called the Zealot, who comes from a certain group of zealots who are very enthusiastic, very stubborn, and they are ready to die for God and for God's kingdom. At the same time, we have Judas, poor man, who betrayed at the end, who was uh, by nature a robber. We have different people from different backgrounds, cultural patterns, but they are all one today in one group of apostles chosen, elected by Jesus to bring the good news to all corners of the world.